Now, since heart attacks, strokes, and high blood pressure are very common, it might be a good idea to know more about this arterial stiffness problem. Your arteries becoming calcified. This usually comes from getting older. It can come from inflammation because a person's a diabetic or they consume a lot of carbs and sugar that create fibrosis. Or for example, they're consuming foods that are very inflammatory, like the omega-6 fatty acids. But there is one additional, very important factor that you need to know about. It's actually a cause of hardening of the arteries or your arteries becoming very, very stiff. And that is a vitamin K2 deficiency. When you are deficient in vitamin K2, the calcium that is floating through your blood doesn't necessarily go anywhere. It's not directed in the bones. You see, vitamin K2 has a lot of benefits to your body, but two really important ones we're going to talk about are number one, driving the calcium into your bone and making your bones really strong. So there's two proteins that vitamin K2 are dependent upon, one being responsible for keeping your bones really, really strong and preventing osteoporosis and osteopenia. And the other is keeping calcium out of the arteries and out of the walls of your arteries. And so I'm going to put several links down below to back up what I'm saying uh, from some really interesting, credible studies. But vitamin K2 can keep the calcium out of your arteries and in the right place to bones. It can even decrease your risk of heart attacks by 50% if you have enough in your body. But the problem is a lot of people are deficient in vitamin K2 because they don't know where vitamin K2 comes from. It comes from the very food that they are told to avoid. It comes from food high in saturated fat and cholesterol. You can also get it from other fermented foods like NATO, but typically in the West, we don't even know what NATO is. It's a fermented soybean uh, product that uh, is never uh, served at any restaurants. But if you live in Asia, you might know more about NATO. But you get vitamin K2 from fatty foods like meats, organ meats, egg yolks, grass-fed butter, dairy, and yogurt. You're not going to get any K2 from vegetables, fruits, beans, grains, or nuts. Now, there's a couple interesting little parts of this, this story I want to tell you about. One is this. When you combine vitamin K2 with vitamin D3, you get a greatly improved vascular profile. And I'm talking about a reduced thickness in the wall of your carotid arteries. Those are the arteries in your neck right here, just by adding K2 to your D3, which is very interesting. You also get a decrease in calcium buildup in those carotid arteries when you add the K2 to the D3. And anytime you're adding K2 to D3, I would recommend doing this. For every 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3, you should add about 100 micrograms of K2. And I'm talking about the version of K2 that is the MK7 version. Now, another interesting piece of this puzzle is this. Women and men that take a lot of calcium as a supplement, like at least 1,000 milligrams or more a day, with or without vitamin D actually increase the risk of dying from a heart attack by 20 to over 85% because they're omitting vitamin K2. Now, there's another little piece of this puzzle I want to talk about. Warfarin. Warfarin is a medication that blocks vitamin K1, okay? People that take warfarin are trying to prevent clotting because vitamin K1 has everything to do with blood clots. Now, when you normally take vitamin K1 or get it from your salads because it's normally in leafy greens and other vegetables, you're not going to clot more than you should normally clot. It doesn't actually create like these clots that go up to your brain and create strokes or heart attacks. That's not how it works. But if you had heart problems or arrhythmias or atrial fibrillation or 
or some type of pre-existing problem, then they're going to recommend something to reduce clots. And warfarin is a popular drug. Here's the problem with warfarin. And I just want to bring this up because it relates to what we're talking about. Warfarin not only blocks vitamin K1, but it also blocks that protein that I talked about, the specific protein that is supposed to inhibit calcification in your vascular system and within the wall of your vascular system. This is why one of the side effects from warfarin is vascular calcification. So you end up preventing a clot but you could potentially increase the calcium in the arteries. If it was me and I had to take uh, some type of medication to prevent clots, I would evaluate to see if there's some other drug that I could take that doesn't involve this K1 or vitamin K2 proteins. In summary, start to increase vitamin K2 foods. If you're going to take vitamin K2 as a supplement, I would recommend you take vitamin D3 with K2. That seems to work better. And the next tip would be to go on a low-carb diet simply because that's going to reduce inflammation and thus keep your arteries from becoming stiff. And of course, lastly, avoid the omega-6 fatty acids that could potentially increase inflammation in your arteries. Now, since we're on the topic of K2, there's a lot more to know about that. And if you haven't seen this video, I think you'd find it very interesting, and I'll put it up right here.